That's the one. Yeah. So, Ugh. you just kind of hit go on the mic, and yeah. I didn't even know what we were going to do. I don't know, man. Welcome to Spellcast, the Game Wizards podcast. What the fuck are we going to talk about? <laughs> That's a very good question. <laughs> that awkward silence of, uh... See, I figured if I just hit record, eventually it has... we'll figure something out. We haven't kind of really been keeping up with Spellcast, like... It was supposed to be like a weekly thing, and then it just kind of became a whenever the fuck we decide is... Well, it, it kind of okay. just became like whenever we're able to record. Yeah. Because, like, life and busyness and not being able to record weekly and... Like, Spellcast isn't really something where we can record two episodes at the same time because we'd probably just end up like trailing off onto the same topic so exactly. like they'd be continuations of each other and that, that defeats the point yeah because because like with the with the actual let's plays that we do everything is just like okay we'll play the game for an hour and then we'll let the footage like do its thing and then we'll play for another hour well, see, and, like, that makes sense if, like, a conversation is a continuation because, like, it is a continuation, you know? Exactly, because... But with spellcasts, like, these are... They're supposed to be, like, separate things. Exactly, and we can't Whatever. just, like... Okay, so we ended talking about Minecraft, and now we're going to talk about Minecraft for another hour. It's like, we can't really... <laughs> I mean, we could, I could do that. Well, there's been a lot of activity on the server, but... I, I I really don't want to devote another entire episode to Minecraft. We'll just, we'll or just, Borderlands. We'll we'll just change it from spellcast to minecast. I feel like that's probably a thing. I'd be surprised if it wasn't. If minecast isn't a thing, we should coin it now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Quick, call up the copyrights. It doesn't really work that way. I mean, we could, <laughs> but, like... <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I got a tentacle card game. <laughs> oh, okay. That's where we're going with this. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have... you have something else? Do you have life news? I mean, whatever it is, I doubt it's as exciting as a tentacle card game. <laughs> I mean, the the best I've got is that I've been upgrading the fuck out of my computer the last couple of weeks. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, my what all case, have you upgraded? My new case came today, so I'm going to probably spend half of tomorrow figuring that all out. Oh, good luck with that. But, yeah, let's see. I mean, I was looking at graphics cards... And most of them are like, yeah, you need this big of a power supply. And I was like, well, what the fuck is in my computer? And it's a fucking 300 watt power supply. <sighs> like, what the fuck? I can't run shit on that. So I went and got like a 700 watt power supply. Nice. With LEDs. Are the LEDs necessary? No. Yes. What color are they? They are blue. What color is your case? It is blue. Oh. There's kind of a blue theme going... Like, everything on my what? computer that lights up is blue. I, I, I was hoping that you would say your case was silver, and, like, you had a bunch of stuff in it that was blue. Why? Because then it would be, like, Leco in computer form. Oh. Yeah, I guess, huh? It'd be cool. But... It'd be, like, thematic. Well, it kind of is, like, with the blue <laughs> LEDs and everything like that. Because, like, yeah. I got my new keyboard, like, forever ago... And it's it's like got the blue backlight on it. Nice. And then I got my new headset, which it doesn't have it doesn't light up or anything, but it's got like blue like trim on it. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so I've got and then I've got my new case, which has like a window on the side, so you can actually see the LEDs from the power supply. Nice. Yeah, I wouldn't mind getting a new case myself. Like nothing against Yours is this fucking case. Huge. That exactly. Like my that. current my computer could probably fit inside your computer. Uh, possibly. Mine is pretty massive. Like, if I were to build another computer, I'd one probably like put a little more thought into like what parts about it beyond. Uh, well, this motherboard has more USB ports than this other motherboard, and it looks really cool, so I'll go with this one. <laughs> 
Because that, that was my see, whole decision-making process. Uh, see, I, I researched the fuck out of everything I'm going to put in my computer. Like, I'll look at reviews and be like, oh, this thing has like 9,000 reviews and it's got like four and a half stars. It's probably pretty damn good, but what are the people who don't like it actually saying about it? And it's like, oh, when you do this fucking thing to it, it like explodes. And I'm like... Well, don't do that fucking thing to it, you dumbass. Like, obviously, if you do that, it's obviously, bad. if you put a bomb in it, it's gonna blow up. <laughs> like, fuck, like, dude. Um, I put my power supply in the microwave, and it melted and exploded. Oh, One star. No, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, like, yeah. And the case I was looking at, like, I guess it was originally listed as coming with a power supply. And, like, all of the negative reviews about it are the, about the fact that it didn't come with the power supply. I'm like, uh, okay, so... What you're saying is it's a really good case... You just... Unless you're you expecting, expecting it to come with it, a power supply. Yeah. Well, and if they were advertising it as coming with the power supply, I'd be pretty miffed, too. But... Yeah. But I already got my power supply, so yeah. fuck all y'all. Plus, yeah. it was, like, a $30 case. I'm like, you're gonna get a power supply with a $30 case? That's... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Yeah. Even expecting that is kind of... Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah, I mean... When I build things, I, I, I've i noticed I want to go for, like, a visual aesthetic. Like, I'll have a theme I'm going with. Like, with this one, I just... I was like, I want stuff that looks cool and... Um, you know, whatever. USB ports are nice to have. And I do use most of the USB ports on this thing, so I'm glad I got one with as many as I did. Mm-hmm. But, uh, like, this past Christmas, when I built my girlfriend her computer, uh, I wanted to paint a Matarasu on the side of it. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, it should be white, and then, like, I should get, like, red stuff, because a Matarasu is, like, white oh, with the red details. Yeah. So I went with that theme, and it came out really cool, and, it you know, it has good parts in it. Like, the one thing it's lacking is a uh, video card. Like, I got her a motherboard that has a decent onboard video card. Like, it can oh, run nice. games decently. But yeah, that like would be, like, the computer... one major upgrade. Yeah, like, that's what my computer has been. Because, like, I got my computer for Christmas, and it was all, like, it was a pre-built thing that my parents got, like, Best Buy or something. Yeah. And it ran everything decently well. It's, it's just, you know, not... The Why biggest... go for good when you can build fantastic? Exactly. And yeah. since now that I have a job and therefore the money to buy all these fancy new cards, why the fuck not upgrade? Especially since there are games coming out that kind of need that extra power. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, my previous computer, the first major upgrade I did to it was get a new graphics card because I couldn't play The Force Unleashed at more than, like, two frames per second. Yeah. <laughs> And then I, I just kind of threw a new graphics card in there, and suddenly it was like, whoa, not only can I play this game, I can play it on full graphics settings. That's awesome. Yeah, I kind of want to build two new computers, personally. Like, I, I've been wanting to, for a while, build the Magus case mm -hmm. out of wood blocks. I mean, I'd probably spend about 200 bucks on the case, because, like, just for the wood blocks. Yeah. But it would be awesome. It would be. But uh, I do want to build something that's, like, a little more themed. Like, I want to have something where, like, all the LEDs are green. Because I like green. Mm -hmm. That's why my keyboard's default thing is green. Even though I have, like, four different color settings that that thing cycles between. I usually just leave it on green. And I like blue. But, yeah. Um... Speaking of games that require some graphical prowess, freaking Evolve. It's, it's so beautiful. I can't oh, yeah. wait till that game releases. Like playing the uh the like beta they did. I got really into that game. It was fun. And uh I ended up pre-ordering it. The full version should release tomorrow actually. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. But like, that game, I, like, went into the options when I was on the beta, and I put the settings on, like, medium, and that thing looks better than Skyrim. Wow. <laughs> I was like, damn, this shit's beautiful. Nice. 
Yeah, it it yeah. looks really good. I don't know if maybe like the beta, like the settings didn't like sway as much, but it was just like I knocking it down from like the highest settings to medium, there wasn't really much of a noticeable difference. Hmm. It was like, yeah. whoa, this game's pretty. And it's fun. Yeah. And speaking of the Skyrim, it's kind of became like the thing I use to prove to my computer, to prove to myself that my computer is like now officially like a real gaming PC because I I plugged in the card, connected everything, like updated the drivers, got everything working. I launched Skyrim, and it defaults to ultra high graphics. Nice. I'm like, yes, this is a gaming computer now. And then you, of course, have to mod and the then hell I, of out course, of it to make install, it look even prettier. Install more mods to make it look even better. And, yeah, yeah. And I installed a a mod that like messes with the menu to make it more PC friendly. Because I mentioned that oh, I'm forcing I wonder if you myself. Got the same menu mod I have. It's like Sky UI, I think, is what it's called. That or something. sounds right. I think it's the only one that there is. Really, like. The one I downloaded, I downloaded it for, like, a specific other mod that required it or something. Oh. And it might be that same one. It probably is. I don't think there are too many that really do yeah. all that much. Sounds right. Yeah, it, it basically makes it the menu system like Oblivion. Like, you have the little tabs and everything. Yeah. That's pretty much, like, what I immediately know. I'm like, oh, this is a little bit more like Oblivion. God. I'm, I'm cool with that. There's so many things I preferred about Oblivion over Skyrim. Yeah. Just, like, the menu system, the leveling system, the magic system, mm -hmm. spell <clears throat> creation. Yeah. I haven't really messed around with that, like, at all in Skyrim. Does Skyrim even have spell creation? I don't think it does. Does it? I don't think so. I know they really messed with the enchanting system, and I don't really like it. Yeah, that too. Like, you have to destroy something with an enchantment to learn that enchantment. Like, I don't know. Like, like that in concept seems kind of cool. Like, yeah, I think it made a little more sense to, like, oh, if you know this spell, you can enchant something yeah, with it's it. like, oh, I know but... how to shoot fireballs. I want this dagger to burn things when I stab them. Yeah. But, you know... It, but it, it, it does cool. make sense that you could learn spells by yeah. destroying enchanted things. Like, hmm, how learn does, enchantments by destroying enchantments. Yeah. How does this ring make my punching stronger? Oh, it's this spell. Poof. Yeah. Now I know. Now I can make my own ring of punching. But, like, you can't make 100% chameleon armor anymore. Yeah, that does suck. <laughs> Which was mostly just funny for, like... Causing the mass panic in towns. Of course, once you, like, max out your sneak, you might as well be invincible. Yeah. But, so, the funny thing about 100% Chameleon was, like, so if you hit someone, they would try to report it to a guard. But since you're 100% invisible, they can't report the crime, so they just frantically run circles <laughs> around the guard. If you punch a guard, they do the same thing. So guards start running circles around each other trying to report this crime... But they have no crime to report because you're 100% invisible. That is So amazing. you can just turn a town into this frantic mash of people running around chasing guards. Man, fucking with the guards in general was just fun in Oblivion. Yeah. Like, when you when you become the Archmage, you, like, aggro, like, all the guards in town. And then you just lead go to the them, Mage's Tower. Lead them to the Mage's Tower and have, like, all the battle mages just fuck them all up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you could have Mage Wars <laughs> by using the Battle Mages as your personal guard. It was like, awesome. Uh, I may have stolen everything from everyone in town. Protect me, mages! Uh, but yeah, I also liked the custom spells, because you can make fun spells like, Hello, charm three points for like one second on touch. It was the weakest I could make it. It cost, like, one mana. So, like, the cast time, you regenerated hello, your hello. mana cost. <laughs> wow. So you could just get that skill up really quickly. Just be like, hello, hello, hello. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, that was the meteor spell I made, where I just put the uh, radius as high as possible on a fireball. Oh. Cast it in a room and watch your frame rate drop. Oh, dude, things went flying. But the funnest thing to do with that, actually, 
was, um... Because, like, if you cast it someplace nearby, it basically just made the whole screen red. So it's fun to, like, climb up to the top of the, like, Mage Tower DLC. Because it's up on a mountain. And you just, like, cast it down at the ground. <laughs> and you see the explosion just... Wow. Like, it was still a, a like, decent-sized explosion from really far away. I was like, damn. <laughs> I remember... Put it in perspective. Like, the stat system, it was so easy to just completely break everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, my, uh, Taylor character, her athletics, I think, the one that determines, like, your movement speed. Yeah. She takes fall damage going downstairs. <laughs> That's how fast <laughs> she moves. I go from the top of the stairs to the uh... bottom so fast that it counts as fall damage. See, I wish I got more into Morrowind when that came out, because that game had oh. some crazy shit you could do. Like, you could basically, like, soul trap stuff onto yourself, so you could get your stats higher than their maximum. Oh! <laughs> yeah, I I've had a couple friends who played that game into the dirt, and, uh, like, there's... The final boss is, like, behind this wall or whatever. You're supposed to unlock this gate because it's this really high wall. Oh, yeah. But his jump stat was high enough that he could just jump over the wall. So, like, way early in the game, he jumps over the wall and just, like, punches the heart and one-shots it. <laughs> and then later, when he's actually, like, trying to complete everything, he goes through the main story. And he can't finish the main quest because you're supposed to kill it with this specific weapon. But it's already dead. Oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I have Morrowind. I installed it. I installed a bunch of like graphical mods and stuff to make it look nice. I played it for like an hour. Yeah, Morrowind's and, and, a lot less like friendly to get into. Yeah, like I I made it to some like building that was like a town inside, and I tried to steal something, and everybody wanted me dead. Hey, that kind of sounds like what happened to me. Like, the guards took out a death sentence on me for stealing something in this one town. And I, I just kind of stopped playing after that because I couldn't go to towns. If that fork isn't yours, thief, die! Uh, what? No, I, I was trying to buy it. But I do remember I used to steal everyone's pillow in that game. Because in the first town, there's like one dude's house where you go in and under his pillow is like an enchanted dagger. Oh. So, after that, every single person's house I looted, I would take their pillow to see if there was anything under it. <laughs> so wow. I just had, like, this collection of pillows. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think in that one, too, like, it was before, because Oblivion introduced the, like, stolen item thing. So, like, you could steal an item from someone and sell it back to them. <laughs> They, hey, I used to have a dagger that looked exactly like that. How much <laughs> you want for it? Like, people didn't know your goods were stolen magically. Which makes more sense. Yeah. Like, it's I stole like... this book that there's a billion copies of. You somehow know it's a stolen copy, though. It's like, well, he sent out a notice telling everybody that his book was stolen. But why would you think this specific copy belongs to him? Oh, uh, magic! Magic, yeah. Dragons did it. <laughs> Dragons did it. Uh, I feel like that's the good like cop out for no da Daedra. The, the Daedra did it. The Daedra, <laughs> yeah. Shagorath did it. <laughs> that yeah, that's like that's the cop out for anything. Like caught fondling statues uh it was because of sanguine it was because of shayagorath uh making it rain flaming dogs from the sky oh that actually was shayagorath <laughs> that one was Shea. that's my favorite quest to date out of any yeah. of those games and we've definitely talked about it before yeah <laughs> there's just something magical about convincing a town of the apocalypse how much fun would it be to try something like that in real life? Like, look up, like, the most specific doomsday prophecy you can. Find people who believe in it. Like, actually believe in it. And then try and, like, 
try to recreate Fake it. the signs yeah. of the apocalypse to them. I don't know. Like, on one hand, there's a part of me that would think that'd be hilarious. On the other hand, there's the part of me that's like, that would probably be kind of scary. Like, they'd probably do horrible things because they thought the world was ending. People would because get hurt. people don't do horrible things now. Well, yeah, but, like, people would get hurt, and it would be, like, something you caused. Yeah. <laughs> like, on one hand, the concept's hilarious. On the other hand, like, when you really think about it, it's like, oh, that, that might the not be the best idea. Nigh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's another fun thing in those games? I don't know. I just miss creating spells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wonder I wonder if there's a mod out there that adds spell creation into Skyrim. I'd be surprised. I feel like there's gotta be. Like... It's something that I'd think there would be. At the same time, like, it might be, like, a little too complex. But I don't know. Some of the mods I've seen. Yeah, there are some mods that just completely change the entire game. And I, I honestly try to avoid those. Like, I mostly go for the mods that add, like, cosmetic things. Yeah. Or, like, nothing that actually changed. Like, very few. Like, I downloaded a mod that lets you craft the curved swords. Because yeah. Because Taily. It was like, that has to be a thing. Um... There was one, I forget what it was called, it was like the tons of characters mod or something. Mm -hmm. But it adds all these, like, in no, interesting NPCs, that was the oh. name of it. And it adds, like, other quests and all these, like, other, like, NPCs and stuff. Like, interesting followers that are a little less boring than some of the default mm -hmm. ones. Yeah, see, one of, one of the ones... Like, I downloaded one that's, like, it's, like, Cloaks of Skyrim. And basically all it does is allow you to craft, like, capes and cloaks. I'm like, that's yeah. cool. That's a little detail that actually makes your character look a lot cooler. Like, yeah, suddenly I have a cape. Because why not? Yeah, I have a few craftables. Like, I have, like, swords from Legend of Zelda. And, um, I have the Staff of Toilet. I'm sorry, what? The Staff of Toilet? It's, it's like, the golden... Scepter thing oh, of okay. Twilight that yes. Discord made. <laughs> and it's called the Staff of Toilet. Okay, sure, why not? <laughs> I can craft that. I think that one was actually on the Steam Workshop. Probably, yeah. Before I just like went to Nexus mods for everything. I kind of mostly try to avoid mods that are like refer like I have a few, a couple minor ones. Like, there's one that makes the bards play the songs from, like, My Little Pony. Like, <laughs> one that, uh... I forget which one. I think it was, there was Winter Wrap-Up and one of the... Uh, there were a couple of them. But, okay. Yeah, and then, uh, Mare in the Moon, of course. Fair enough. It was a very tough decision between that, the moon from Soul Eater, the Death Star, or, uh... Uh, Majora's Mask. Yeah. <laughs> there's like so many moon mods. Which one? <laughs> and yet there's like nothing good for the sun. Yeah. I mean, you'd think the Soul Eater sun, I mean... Yeah. It's just up there. <laughs> yeah. Th that's like the only game I heavily mod, though. Like... Skyrim? Yeah. I don't know. I guess I do have a lot of stuff from the Steam Workshop for Left 4 Dead 2. Oh, yeah. Oh, like God. the Hatsune Miku Witch. <laughs> it's it's great, because you always know it's nearby. You can't mistake that high-pitched Onichan. Yeah, see, and uh, Left 4 Dead, though, it's like a completely, like, not really meant to be taken seriously kind of game. Yeah. So, you can get away with any kind of mods you want without I just wish mods for, like, that you version. use on like the zombie horde worked in multiplayer cuz like <laughs> like I had the one where like it makes all of the uh, zombies daleks yeah and in single player like there there's they're actually dalek models yeah. like wobble around all derpy like yeah i had that one for a while but in multiplayer they just have the voice like the the texture doesn't work in multiplayer oh that's lame yeah so it's like yeah, they sound like Daleks, but they don't look like Daleks, and that kind of ruins it. So, that's why I usually use the Pinkie Pie one. 
Fun, 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 <laughs> fun. Oh, God, Shit, who summoned the power. horde? Fun, fun. Oh, and there's the one that uh, when there's like the horde like scream or the music or whatever it is. Yeah. For, there's one where Discord's like, "Good luck, every pony." <laughs> Like, every time a horde is coming, that's, like, the announcement sound. Yeah. I have, like, I wish there was a better way to... Because when you're activating the mods in the game, like, it's alphabetical. Yeah. And I wish there was a way where you could, like, sort those into, like, specific folders or, like, mod <laughs> sets. Because I just have so many. It's, like, some I only use with other ones. Like, I have a bunch of Minecraft-based ones that oh, make, yeah. like, the mobs look like Minecraft creatures. And, like, the weapons are all pixelated. So, like, you know, my favorite weapon is the grenade launcher because it shoots little miniature creepers. <laughs> wow. It's awesome. Then I have uh, another grenade launcher mod that's uh, it's the lemon cannon. Shoots explosive <laughs> lemons. Yeah, lemons! That one's pretty good, too. But the little, the little creepers are just awesome. <laughs> You know what the best mod ever is? The frying pantsu. <laughs> I showed you that, right? Yeah, you did. Uh, um, there was actually someone who had suggested a map mod. Like, I've never really tried map mods before, but apparently there's this one that's really good. It's, uh, it's based on Legend of Zelda. Hmm. It's like a Hyrule one, and... Uh, fuck, I forget what like what area specifically it was, but I haven't had a chance to try it out because like I downloaded it, but I haven't really played the game since. Oh yeah, and like from my understanding, the AI doesn't really do well with map mods for like the computer control players. So like yeah. they they're kind of like jumping off cliffs and shit. <laughs> So, okay. it's something that you have to play through with, like, human players to play through it effectively. Yeah, I could see that. So, I want to try that, but, like, I need to get four other people, well, three other people to download that particular map pack and be willing to play Left 4 Dead too. Yeah. It's been on our list. We need to, like, redo our... Yeah... Like, figure out audio and stuff for that. Yeah, it's just kind of like a weird recording thing where it's like, we want game audio, but we need to make sure... Like, that a chat audio doesn't go through yeah. and get picked up in the capture. Clearly, the most ideal way to do that would be through a LAN situation. Yeah. But, again, that still, like, is another issue. I don't know. Or just, like get laptops and use a chat program on the laptop yeah but that's like <laughs> that still that's a little obnoxious like a bunch of extra work not to mention actually buying a laptop yeah which i don't know i've always actually kind of wanted to have a laptop just for yeah. the portability of like like originally it was for magic the gathering uh when i was playing that a lot because if I had a laptop back when I was playing Magic the Gathering, like I had the uh, custom card maker that I would mess around with all the time, so like I could work on ideas and stuff for that while you know playing the game. Or the other thing was I wanted to have the comprehensive rules on me at all time. Oh, because th there were people who would have rules wrong, and like without having it there with me, it's not like. I could really dispute what the judge says, even if the judge was wrong, which he was a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's it's pretty bad feeling when, like, you lose a game because of a rules call that the judge made that was wrong. I can imagine. So, you know... I had originally wanted a laptop for that. Like, now it would have the convenience of... I could have, like, all my Zanschlu gaming scripts, like, editable. Like, I print them out, and I kind of, like, go over them every once in a while. Just, uh... I have them in a folder. But, you know, if I actually had, like, the documents with me everywhere I go, I could just, like, edit them whenever. Yeah, like... Because I, I have my shitty little netbook that 
still runs after having that thing. I've had that thing for fuck, like let's see, it's gone. at least four years. I think I've had that thing, and it still runs. It's slow as shit, but it was always nice to have it like on the bus. I could just open up like some thing I was working on and whatever, just yeah. mess around with it whenever I was bored. And that's like ninety percent of the stuff I've written has just been. I have nothing better to do on a 40-minute bus ride to a college campus. Yeah. I'll just write whatever and see where it goes from there. Yeah. It's amazing how, like, boredom is such a good uh, motivator. It's an extremely good motivator. Um, yeah. I want to say that's, like, the main reason why I haven't really worked on comics as much since high school. It's because, like, (laughs) well, because in high school, I just work on comics in class because class was boring as shit. Yeah. And now it's like, well, I got all these video games and, you know, video games, (laughs) video games, video games. Oh, God, they're so distracting, man. Like, even game. There's games that are distracting me from other games I want to play. Like, (laughs) it's that bad. (laughs) Like, Minecraft is the worst. Yeah, I get, I completely understand. Like, because I got my 3DS and had it for, like, two months before I could actually buy afford to buy anything for it. And then I got a job and suddenly I can buy everything I ever want. So I was like, I'm going to get Animal Crossing. And I'm not going to abandon it after, like, a week. Because that kind of happens with Animal Crossing. It gets... Yeah. You know, it gets kind of repetitive after a while. And I was like, okay, now I'm going to get Tomodachi Life. And then I'm going to get Smash Brothers. And then I'm going to get Pokemon, like, all in the same month. Yeah. I was like, I want to play this game, but I have this game now. Yeah, like, I played Smash a lot, like, that first, like, week or so it came out. And then, like, I've barely touched it since. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I have... Like, right now, the one that I'm consistently playing is Monster Hunter, and that's because, uh, like, we have, like, a full hunting party, like, a full group of four, and we get together on Saturdays to play. Nice. So, that's fun. And, like, it's something that I'm doing with other people, so that's the one reason I'm keeping consistent on that. But, like, I've had Pokemon Alpha Sapphire for, like, two months now, almost, and I'm, I have two badges. (laughs) <laughs> like, I'm not making progress at all in that game. I've been in the same town for, like, three weeks now. That's because you suck. I'm just not working at it. Yeah, I know. I get what you mean. But, you know, eventually I'll get to it, and I'll have all my Pokemans leveled up, and I'll get me a secret base, and all that good shit. And then I can do the same thing with Ruby version. <laughs> since I got both of them. And there's also all the games I keep buying on Steam. Even though I made a promise to myself that I wasn't going to buy any more until I'd beaten a fairly large percentage of the ones I had. And I made a list and everything. And that's just kind of gone out the window. Because, because everything... Steam. Because Steam, Exactly. Like, oh, this game's on sale for two dollars. Between Mine. between Steam sales and Humble Bundles, I, yeah. like it's impossible not to like, just constantly add more games to your library. Cause like, it's like, I bought the, ten bucks for like eight games. I bought the Star Wars Humble Bundle. I already had every single one of those games, except I didn't have them on Steam, and now I have them on Steam. I almost did the same. Like so. They have that, like, same collection, like, every Star Wars game on Steam mm-hmm. as, like, a Steam bundle a while back, and it was on sale for, like, a really good price, and I was mm-hmm. like, I'll buy that, why not? And, uh, like, when I saw that Humble Bundle, I almost bought it. I don't know why. It's like, I already have all these games on Steam. Why would I do this? <laughs> it's such a good deal, but I already have them! <laughs> like, uh, I, I kind of snapped, too. Like, I looked at it, I was like, wait a minute. I think I have every single game here. And I, I like, I checked my library just to make sure. And I was like, yeah, I have every game here. Yep. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, it, it's it's bad. It's it's that like deal mindset. Like, oh man. So do I really want this, or do I just want to get a good deal on something? Yeah. <laughs> Even if I already have it. <laughs> but no, I I did want to get like those games in my Steam library though. Just yeah. Just because it's them. more convenient than having to be like, okay, pull this case off the shelf, throw it in the CD drive, download it, or install it, and put in like the yeah. fucking serial key and all that. Or, just download it from Steam, and it's ready to go. That's another thing that's kept me from a lot of games, is just like the convenience of computer gaming versus like dealing with a console. Yeah. Like, I have maybe eight RPGs on my PS3. And I have not started a single one of them. <laughs> like, and I really want to, too. Like, the one that I really want to get to is the new Dragon Age. Because, one, I loved the first two games. Two, like, I've heard so many good things about this one. Like, Dragon Age 2 had its issues, but it was still fun. But this one, it's like, they took a step in the right direction and only in the right direction, from what I understand. Like, everything about it is just, like, a step up. Nice. And it's like, I want to play it, but it's going to just consume me once I start. Because it's one of those games. So clear your schedule and then start it. Yeah, really. <laughs> but that's kind of hard when I'm trying to get everything together for, you know, starting a show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard to clear your schedule. Okay, when, episode like... one is live. I'm going to go play Dragon Age three months later. Oh yeah, I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah when you've like reserved yourself to working on something like that daily it's it's kind of hard to like get yourself to play anything that's away from your computer because like i can work on something and then go straight to a game on my computer mm -hmm. it's like or i could be in minecraft and be like oh yeah i haven't done something today and like go work on yeah. something real quick like throw together a script or read over one that i've already written just to make sure nothing sounds awkward. I have to, like, rewrite one. There's, like, four paragraphs that I'm like, cut that. Yeah. Cut that. Rewrite that. <laughs> so. It's weird how you can write, like, ten pages on, like, almost nothing if it's related to something interesting. But, yeah. like, when you have a paper to write and for, like, a class... It's like, okay, I've spent 12 hours and I've got one paragraph. Uh, I got how a do I sentence. Turn this, how do I turn this into three paragraphs? It's like, I got a sentence. I need to straight, stretch this over ten pages. <sighs> Time to flex those BS muscles. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> that's what it amounts to when you're trying to write a fucking paper for someone. Especially when there's like a, like a page count or a word count requirement. Yeah. It's like... You have to write at least this many words. I'm like, okay, I know how to say this sentence in one word. But because of this word count requirement, I have to reduce my vocabulary level to make myself more verbose. Yep. Yeah. And therefore, it comes off as unnatural, it doesn't flow right, it's hard to read, and it makes me sound like a fucking idiot who repeats myself ten times. And yet you still get an A. Or a B. Or a B. Or a C. Anything better than a D. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. I, that was like every paper ever for me. Just like, um, alright, I'll just say this again, but I'll say it slightly differently so it sounds like I'm saying something different. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Oh, uh, God. I don't know what's worse. That, like, you f feel the need to resort to tactics like that, or the fact that those tactics actually work. I feel like they are equal in terms of terribleness. Yeah. Both are kind of sad. Yeah. Okay, time to control F the punctuation and bump the size up a couple levels. <laughs> hey, two pages magically becomes three and a half. Pro as fuck. <laughs> the sad thing is, I actually had to do that a couple times and didn't end up failing the class. <laughs> hey, that works. Shit. Yeah, do well, what you need to to get through those 
boring, unnecessary papers that you have to BS. Yeah. Ugh. But yeah, I don't know. Like, writing the scripts and stuff for this, like, I'm having fun with it, but at the same time, like, it is work. Yeah. And, like, I do f- see it as work. So, like, getting myself to start working on it is just like, um, I, I guess I should, like, write a thing. <laughs> But, like, once I get going, I'm good. Yeah. Because, like, it is interesting. I mean, I'm writing about a game I just played. Yeah, it's... The hard part is getting myself to record. (laughs) Understandable. Plugging in the mic and, like, hitting the record button and, like... Because when I record, I've noticed, um... I tend to have to do, like, four or five takes... And sometimes, like, it'll be, like, one weird little thing where, like, I'll stumble over a word while I'm saying it, and I'll be like, fuck, I just ruined this fucking take. Yeah. So I, like, just stop it there and keep going, like... But I did manage to catch myself the last time I did that, so, like, I started tripping over something I was saying, and I, like, I stopped, stayed silent for something, and then just, like, restarted, and I was able to cut it out without it, like, sounding weird at all. Yeah. uh... So, you know, yay being able to edit, but, like, if I don't catch myself, I just, like, I... Fuck! It's like, god damn it. (laughs) And so, as you can clearly see, the... The the fuck, 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 shit, fuck. Like, I don't want to just cut... I'd rather start over than just deal with that. (laughs) Yeah. But, uh... Yeah. The other issue is, like, it being quiet enough to record and, mm-hmm. you know, all that. You know what that's like. Though. Oh, I, fu- I know what the fuck that's like. Believe me, if I had... I mean, I would like to get a, a mic like the one that we're using here. Yeah. Eventually. Just to have for when I do have time to record, because otherwise I'm using my headset mic, which is not the best quality for anything. And I think... Because I got my new headset, and I think the mic quality is actually noticeably worse than the one I had been using before. And I've had that previous mic wow. headset for, like, probably ten years at least. What kind of headset did you get? I don't know, some cheap, like, $20 thing I found on Amazon. Well, that was your mistake right and there. And it, it sounds really... <laughs> the sound quality is good, it's just the mic quality that sucks, and... I feel mm. like if you're using it for anything other than, like, voice chatting, I mean, it's not what it's designed for, so it makes sense. I just happened to have a mic previously that was really good. Yeah. My headset's not terrible. Like, it could technically be used for recording, mm-hmm. but, like, this is just so much better. Exa- well, I mean, this is this mic is designed to record well, yeah. good audio. Whereas a headset, it's like, oh, I want to talk to people online while I'm playing a game or something like that. Yeah. It doesn't have to be good, it just has to be understandable. I, I don't know, I, I've heard some people with some bad mics, and I, I'd, I'd well, rather just keep them muted. Well, yeah, like I said, <laughs> it doesn't have to be good, it just has to be understandable. Like, if you can understand clearly what they're saying, it's not usually a problem. Eh, I don't know, like, you can understand what they're saying, it's just it sounds awful. Yeah. And it's like, I'd rather just mute you and pretend that I don't hear you. (laughs) Basically, never use in-game voice chat. That, too. Like, that never sounds good. Ever. Why is that? I don't know. I guess it's... It's probably thrown in, like, an afterthought or something. Like, in-game voice chat has never been good for, like, anything. Like, even when I used to play Halo all the time... Like, the only time I would ever experience in-game voice chat was usually when um, I was playing solo. And, like, that's how I met a couple of the people that I knew only through Halo. But most of the time, we were always in a chat, like, the Xbox Live, like, chat room. Because, like, through the game, it wasn't as good. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Which is weird. That's a thing, (laughs) yeah. But it definitely was a thing. God, I miss playing Halo. And then I say that all the like, time. When but, you when uh, you play like PC games online, you have like like raid call or mumble or 
fucking Ventrilo, which are programs that are designed yeah. to carry your audio, you know, and play it back, and it's it sounds noticeably better, even if it's not the best. Well, the other thing with, like, programs like that is you have, like, control over the settings. Yeah, there's that, too. Whereas, like, with in-game voice, you don't. Yeah. But, yeah. It still kind of sounds like shit, which is, you know, why we need to figure out how to make, like, OBS or some other capture program not record voice chat while still waiting to, while still uh, capturing game audio. Yeah. What? Uh, I'm sure there's a way I to feel do like there it. has to have be to a find way the to setting. do that. Yeah. We can just Google it. We'll find the setting pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> it's gotta be there. But yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't... Th- like, yeah, it's not as good because it's coming, you know, through a computer, but... I don't know, it, it's really dependent on, like, the mic the person on the other side is using, too. Yeah. Like, how well it sounds coming out. Because some people definitely sound better than others. Yeah. Like, and, you, and if you have a shitty microphone, your audio sounds like shit. Yeah. And it's not good for, re- especially not good for recording a Let's Play or any kind of gaming video where communication is a thing. Yeah. But it just sounds extremely unprofessional. And yeah. we definitely don't have any videos where that's ever been a thing. Ever. Well, we got the Castle Crashers stuff. No, no, no. We don't have any videos where that's ever been a thing. I don't know. Ever. Like, yeah, there was some audio quality issues, but I, I enjoyed the Castle Crashers stuff. I think it was a good playthrough. Like, it at, was. Th- the just... one reason I can see for not uploading it now is... The audio quality is definitely noticeably dated compared to what we have now. Yeah. So it would be like this huge step backwards. But at the same time, I don't want that footage to just like go away. Because, yeah. I don't know. Like, what I might do, because I don't know if Kevin ever finished editing it. I know he was working on some of them and had a bit of it done. But what I might do is I might just like upload those on my personal channel. Yeah, or just like, to have them out there because, like, like I what said, I was I talking about better. doing with Trine during Shadow of the Colossus, we can just like do a good version maybe in the future, and then like and then upload the... the old version. Like I don't know. Yeah, that's an option, or something like that. But yeah, audio quality is a thing. <laughs> yeah, I I still think like. If we were able to do it in, like, a LAN situation, that would be, like, That would be the, the, I- best. the I- absolutely ideal way to do that. I mean, that's how Rooster Teeth does their shit. Yeah. They just they all have in an office. office. They have an office, and it's kind of set up specifically to do that. Well, yeah. But, like... If... If we were able to, we probably could. Like, it's just, like, being willing to, like, move computers and get necessary number of people. Yeah. Because I wouldn't mind doing more, like... Like, with Left 4 Dead, I would like to have a A full full, four. Yeah. That would be nice. And then, um... You know, if we decide to redo Castle Crashers, and... What else do we have that's more than two? Anything multiplayer, really. Yeah. That we would be forced to do over online. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to, trying to think of stuff that's, like, more than two, because most stuff that's multiplayer, we could technically do split-screen. Like, hell, even if we didn't do it split-screen and it was something that had to be land, like, we could potentially do that here. If you, I mean, my mo- modem has plenty of plugs. You could hardwire in here, and we could set up, like, a table. Yeah. It'd be crowded, but it could be done. Yeah, and there would also be the issue of having to move my computer, which it's kind of... Well, you need to fix that anyway. Well, yeah. How are you supposed to go to lands if your computer's, like, bolted to the wall or whatever? I don't go to lands. Why not? It's just never been a thing I ever cared about. You gotta do it. It's fun. I generally don't play a lot of multiplayer games anyway. I mean, I've noticed that the past couple lands I've gone to, I just kind of, like... 
I play a couple of multiplayer games, but eventually people choose like a map or like a format or a game that's either I don't care about or is uninteresting, and I'm just like, I'm gonna go play La Risk of Rain Run <laughs> by myself in this little corner of the room. <laughs> That's like I uh, played in a while, Risk of Rain. Yeah, I still need to unlock the characters that got added in. Yeah, you do. Chef is OP as fuck. But yeah, like uh, Last Land, they were doing uh, TF2. I was having fun. Like I, I've I only played TF2 a couple times because it's one of those games that I can't just get myself to play solo. Mm-hmm. But uh, <coughs> eventually, the person who was host put it on like this. Uh, this map where it was melee only. Oh. Like, if you had the Huntsman or uh, whatever the the crossbow is called. There's like a little like crossbow that the doctor has. The medic. I don't know. I mean, I haven't played it in forever. Yeah. There's like a billion new items and stuff yeah. that I've never even heard of. But yeah, like if you had one of those, you could use it because it was like a medieval map. So like one team was like storming a castle or whatever and the other team was defending it. Oh. And like, it was entertaining for all of one round and then I was bored. <laughs> and they, they kept going for multiple Like I left right away. I was wow. like, I'm going to go do something else. <laughs> but they kept going. I was like, eh. But, uh, so, like, that's just an example of, like, someone choosing a format that just got boring really quickly. Because I-, I found I like the engineer. Like, I like being that asshole who sets up in a corner with a turret. <laughs> See, eventually you become the asshole who puts the turret in that one spot. That one spot. Yeah, that no. one spot. I, I know exactly like, what you're talking okay, about. Okay, I'm just going to co- turn around the corner and, oh god, why are there 12 bullets in my face? There, there was a there was one map we were playing where uh, the enemy engineer got into our, like, intelligence room and set their tur- turret up in there so we couldn't defend our own intelligence. <laughs> wow. Their turret would... Like, it took a while. And they set the teleporter up in there, too, so their team could just, like, come in. <laughs> Go in, grab the briefcase, leave. It, yeah, it was pretty bad. Like, after that round, I, like, I made sure to book it there and just set myself up. Like, all right, I got here as quickly as humanly possible. <laughs> I'm set up. Fuck you. Fuck you, rockets. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I play as Pyro. He's the most mindless. Run around and burn everything. <laughs> so there was one point where the entire enemy team decided to play Spies, and Kevin was playing the Pyro. <laughs> <laughs> burn he everything! Had, he had the greatest time. Uh, it was really funny. Just run around burning everything in a circle. Something will catch. Yeah. Or should I say someone? But yeah, he he got a lot of kills that round, and I just kind of defended our intelligence with a turret. I was like, come at me. And they're like, we're trying, but we keep catching fire. <laughs> a couple people snuck by. Like, they like got into our base, obviously. Kevin can't kill everyone solo. But, you know. Spy up in my sentry. It, 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 was, it was good stuff. Need a dispenser here. Like, I wouldn't mind playing more TF2. It's just, like I said, it's one of those games where, like, I can only play it if I'm playing it with people. Mm-hmm. Like, I actually have a uh, a category I set up on my Steam. It's just multiplayer only, and it's games that I'll never play solo. Yeah. I have a category like that, but I just call it better with multiplayer. Because a lot of them are games that I've mostly played solo, but they're more fun with other people. Fair enough. Like, I put Borderlands in there... What's that uh, one we were playing? Have you ever played Chivalry? I've heard of it. I've never played it. It's it's pretty fun. It, it, like, it plays kind of like your usual FPS, but it's medieval, so yeah. you're running around with, like, a greatsword, or if you're a crazy person, you choose the archer class. <laughs> you die really quickly, and it's really hard to kill people because aiming is a fucking nightmare, but it is kind of fun. 
Yeah, I've heard about it, and I've seen videos of people playing it. Yeah. I just never played it myself. I've had it for, like, a year, and I finally got to play it at, like, the LAN last month. <laughs> I was like, this is actually really cool. I'm glad I bought this forever ago. <laughs> But, yeah. I still want to get that, like, spaceship bridge simulator game, oh, Artemis. Artemis. Yeah. yeah. But, like, I need to get five more people who want to play that. And I'll, we all need I'll a land. I'll play it, for sure. <laughs> and we just need a land space. And, and we need to let's play the fuck out of that shit, because... That would be a kind of a cool game to let's play. Yeah. To do it successfully, like, with a full crew and everything. Yeah. It's just, it, like, it's so cool in concept. I, I want to mm. experience it, see how it plays. So it's like one of those multiplayer games where everybody has a different screen and nobody knows what's happening on anybody else's screen. So there's, like, that communication that you have to have where it's like, okay, our shields are at 17%. Nobody else knows that until you tell them that. Yeah. Well, and... Like, I like the concept of, like, the captain doesn't actually get anything. He just has a monitor and says, like, what screen he wants to see. Yeah. So it's like, that one person has to do most of the keeping track of knowledge, but it's still, like, it just seems like it'd be so fun in a land situation. It would. Especially if you, like, set it up right. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I saw, it's funny that you mentioned that because I recently somebody, I it was a comment on Reddit where somebody posted a video of some people playing on stage. It was, it was Will Wheaton, Jonathan Colton, and like a couple other people. Oh, that's awesome! And it was, like, they, it was just hilarious watching them play it and actually mostly successfully like completing their missions and stuff like that. But just. The way they interacted was really funny because, like, Will Wheaton was on Star Trek. Yeah. And he was the captain now. And he was, like, making it kind of a big deal about that, too, I guess. <laughs> but, funny. yeah, it was. Yeah. See, like, I went in expecting to watch, like, I was like, oh, this video's half an hour long. I'll watch a couple minutes of it to see what's going on. And, and watch I the watched thing. the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> see, I think that would be a really cool thing if we could, like,. Get access to uh, Gamers Anonymous for it because, like, we have the projector screen. Oh. So, like, the captain could be on the projector on screen. Like, that'd be so cool. <laughs> captain could be on the projector, and we could like set the others up like helm around set it heading six two four warp five. Make it so. God, that would be fucking awesome to play with a projector, wouldn't it? Uh, we just we just need a full group. We do. I, I I have no idea what role I would do. I don't I don't think I'd want the responsibility of being captain, <laughs> personally. <laughs> Fuck that. But you know, it it'd be cool. What, I, might what give the I might give being captain a try if I. What is it? Like, There's I would captain, have to th shields, I, communications, engineering, engineering. science. Isn't, like, you know, weapons like, one of them? Yeah, weapons yeah. is one of them. I, I know like I, I would have to familiarize myself with how it all worked together. Yeah. But then I, I feel like if I did that, I could probably... I could be a decent ship captain. As we... Fire nukes fire immediately! Fire first into <laughs> death. Like, oh, they're sending a, a message of peace and love. Nuke them! <laughs> Oh god, it'd be like spore all over again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, it's the it's the people from the planet of puppies and happy pony land. Nuke it. <laughs> and the planet's gone. We are followers of Spode. Worship him with us No, fuck you. I will make this entire galaxy an atheistic monarchy. <laughs> Well, aren't you just the worst? You mean the best. Sure. P promoting the philosophies of science and peace and order and all that shit. And just all that shit. All that good shit that makes for a good society. No religion whatsoever. 
Maybe I'd take out the party animals, too, because they're kind of dicks. Uh, I never got, I never got a chance to play Spore. It was one of those things that, like, when it came out, I didn't really have a gaming PC, but it was funny to watch the videos of just the ridiculous shit yeah. people made. Like, I wish there was a way to just skip straight to the space stage. Because, like, the earlier part is kind of meh. Yeah, like, everything else is just... It's built up to the space stage. Yeah. And after that, it's like, yeah, I can control entire section of this solar system, and this galaxy is partly mine now, and we can have treaties with those guys over there because they want us to help them eliminate those guys over there. But those guys control a good section of the trade route that we just started with them, so maybe we shouldn't piss them off just yet. It's 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 like a greater scale, because it's galactic version of um civilization yeah civilization or like age of empires or something it's like those are just better games mm-hmm. sports just cool in the concept of like you make your race and it's like galactic yeah and it downloads more from the internet yeah which can be a good or bad thing yeah but that those are games I haven't played in a while. I was I like, oh, I found, the, I found the so planet long. of the of the Raichus. The Raichus. <laughs> I was like, oh, there's the penis monsters. <laughs> Which ones? Exactly. Because <laughs> everyone knows that's like 90% of what people did was make dick and balls. Oh, and there's the ultra-realistic predator. My, my favorite one that I saw... Like, back when that game came out was, uh, Raptor Jesus. Because, <laughs> like, it was, like, a human body with, like, a raptor head, and it was, like, pinned to a cross. <laughs> oh, wow. There, there was another one like that that was, like, it was just Jesus, but, like, it made monkey noises. <laughs> wow. Like, that, I, I know it's horrible, but it made me laugh. It still kind of makes me like. I think if you dig far enough in my YouTube favorites, you'll still find those videos. Oh, probably, unless they got removed or anything. Yeah. God. Going back into, like, the last couple of pages of my YouTube favorites is just like, whoa. <laughs> this was forever ago. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of cool. I think the first... I think it's still in there, actually, but I think the first video I favorited on, on YouTube was, uh, it was the Star Trek versus Star Wars, but it was, like, the really dumb, like, edited mashup and everything. It was... I need to see if that's still there now. <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, and also, whatever the fuck else is in my favorites from that long ago. Speaking of, like, blasts from the past, like... It was yesterday, um... Legendary Frog uploaded his old uh, Alien vs. Predator oh, shit, movie really? to YouTube. I was like, oh man, I haven't... Like, watching it again, it's like, oh my god, the audio quality was so bad on this video. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, still kind of funny. Was, that was flash animation in those days. You yeah. You compress the audio like crazy to make it not take an hour to low. I mean, you can tell, like, in Homestar Runner now, like, the... They've uploaded some of their stuff to YouTube, and the quality is amazing Yeah. now, because it didn't have to compress it to upload it to their website. Because, I mean, they've been around for fucking forever. Yeah. And even in their newer, more recently released cartoons, the the audio quality still kind of suffers a bit. But in the YouTube version, it's like, wow. Huh. I, I can't believe... Like I want to watch it on their website, but but this version is so, so much, much better on nicer. YouTube. Yeah, but YouTube's gonna take over fucking everything. The internet has come a long way. YouTube is going to consume all of us, like it hasn't already. Yeah, it's true. I have like forty some videos in my watch later. <laughs> Uh, at least I'm keeping up with my subscriptions. Like, all the stuff in my watch later is, like, past speedruns that I'm like, this would be an interesting game to watch. Mm-hmm. So, 
you know, keeping up with my subscriptions, at, if not daily, at least on, like, a weekly basis. I'll have, like, that one day where I just watch everything and then I move on with life. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been another episode of Spellcast. Yeah. We don't sound like we're half dead from being tired, even though it's only, like, barely midnight. I I'm mostly just kind of losing it in the throat department. Yeah, like, I did notice that my voice is getting kind of, like, scratchy. Crackly, yeah. It's all crackly. I mean, I can make it do that on purpose, but... <laughs> don't do that to yourself. It causes bad things. Yeah. But, yeah, we talked yeah. about a lot of everything. Skyrim, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh... Well, PC, Elder Scrolls games in general, mods, PC, PCs. Gaming. I'm sure there was some other stuff in there before that, but you know, yeah, you'll figure all we'll that out. We'll see you next week, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? The shadow knows. Why would they ever want to be convenient? I'll give you a time machine. Like a somebody, I will stab you in the face. We don't get the time machine until we rescue Melchior. Who? I mean, not Melchior, um... <laughs> Milky Whore? Milky Whore. Milky Whore. He's the guy who makes the cool swords. It's a whore who is very milky. And, and like milky like giant breasts, right? No. No. And we are so not saving the chest recorder. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking I about. I that you've been doing that. What? I saw the full Johnny Depp costume. <laughs> yeah, well, last time we said we should start saving test recordings. I'm like, fuck <laughs> it, I'll do it. So I made a folder for them. Someday we will just compile them all into an hour-long video. <laughs> an hour-long video of nonsense. Exactly. <laughs> and all the times where I'm like testing testicles, test tubes, testicular torsion. Now we're out of spells. And I'm completely ignoring everything you said. I mean, that's my usual test thing. I just think of all the things I can say that sound like You're test. You're supposed to say the alphabet to make sure all your syllables sound okay. A, a B, a C, a D, E, F, a G, H, a J, a K, L, M, N, O, P. Use a lot of S words just to make sure that your S's don't sound like all staticky. Seashells, seashells, by the sea penis. I need to think of a way to respond to that appropriately, <laughs> but there is none. <laughs> okay. There, right. there is nothing I can say in response to that that is, would make anything better.